Hey guys, it's Tom here from the Spazman 13579 studio with a review of the Digitrax DH123 DCC decoder. Alright, so first of all, in the package, you get the manual as you see here, and you get the 9 pin harness. The harness has no 8 pin connector on the end, just a note, so you are going to have to supply your own 8 pin connector if you do need one. As you can see right here, the dimensions without the heat shrink tubing on it are about 1 inch by 5 8 inches, or that would be 25 millimeters by 15 millimeters. With the heat shrink tubing cut off, we can see the inside of the decoder here, and the quality looks pretty good. There's no messed up solder joints, there's no um, scratch marks from manufacturing or anything like that, so everything does look pretty good on it. I see no defects or anything and the components look pretty good. Just to note that this decoder's main competitor per se, the TCST-1, um, the TCST-1 is a little bit shorter, so if you need um, a decoder that will fit in a smaller space, the T1 might be better for your need because the DH-123 is a bit longer and is actually a bit wider too. Okay, let's go back to the manual that was included with this decoder. As you can see here, there's the front, it's pretty plain, just some random information on it. On the inside we have some installation instructions that give a pretty good idea of how to solder everything up. But then you get to the third page and it talks about like maybe two CVs that you can program. Uh, there's a problem here. How do I change lighting effects? How do I change throttle curve? How do I change amps being pulled? How do I change everything else? So, um, I'm not sure what Digitrax was thinking with this one, but do you really want to see the actual manual that you have to download and print out to uh, get everything? Well, here you go. This is the full manual. Yep, so here's the manual. All 64 pages of it. Digitrax, you gotta figure this out. You gotta put some kind of basic manual like TCS does. TCS did an amazing job with their manual. They gave you all the basic CVs that you need and everything else, but no, Digitrax has to make this big thing. Sorry about ranting on this so much guys, but it is a pretty big issue when you're trying to do uh, engines for customers and you have to take literally two hours to figure out how to make something a Mars light effect. That's pretty bad if you ask me. So Digitrax, figure this out and yeah, so anyways, so let's continue with the review. Here's a quick thing, the Digitrax customer service help thing. I cannot say anything about this because I have not had to try it myself. I never called them, I never sent anything in, so I have no idea how it works. I know TCS does a really good job of it, but I do not know what Digitrax does. Let's move on to the connector, which is another big gripe I have about this decoder that has actually killed a couple of mine. This connector looks nice, it has a really nice wire on it too. The wire, I'm not sure the gauge of it, but it's really high quality. But anyway, the connector, I hate this so, so much. Once you plug this connector in all the way, you're not going to get it out with your hands. You're going to have to get some tweezers or something to try to pull it apart. Because, literally, I pulled so hard on it before that I've broken the female connector piece off of the rest of the circuit board. It's terrible. I don't know how or why they did this, but I hate it so much and I bet that other people do as well. I've uh, broken a couple decoders like this, but have not sent them in because they're older and they don't accept them anymore. Let's get to some installation pictures here. As you can see, it's in an Atherum Blue Box GP40-2, and I guess you could say this is like a basic locomotive. The installation is very, very easy. It's not as hard as some people make it out to be. If you need information on how to do it, there's a video I made that you can go check out at the link right here. Or you can go on YouTube or anywhere else and it'll tell you exactly how to install it. There's um, hundreds of videos out there on how to do it. So yeah, it installs very easily and 
um, just make sure not to plug in that decoder all the way if you want to pull it out in the future because it's not going to come out very easily. Let's get to some running videos and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Performance wise, the DH123 is a great decoder. It has no buzzing or hissing noise while running. The lighting effects are pretty good as well. But um, make sure to know that this is only a two lighting effect engine. You can have ditch lights only or you can have front and rear um, headlights because it's only two functions, it's not four function like some of the higher end ones are. And yeah, so the purple and green wires in this case really do not much. The linearity of the throttle curve is very nice. This blue box engine starts running at about speed step 20 and it's very smooth, not much rubbing inside the shell or anything, it fits pretty good in. There is really good voltage pickup. So yeah, this is a good decoder when it comes to running and I can't have really any complaints. One thing to know actually though, if you do short it out at any point, there's a very good chance that it might not work anymore. And that's because there's some kind of software bug inside the decoder that has it so the first time it shorts out, it's almost pretty much dead. So yeah, you might want to watch out for that while working on the lighting, but otherwise, very good performance. So overall, for about $15 on eBay, or even cheaper, the Digitrax DH123 is a good performer. It does have some major flaws like that wiring harness and the manual, but if you can get over those, it is a very good product. I would recommend the TCS T1 over this though, as the features on it are just much more simple and easier to program. So thanks for watching this full review and I hope you guys check back soon. Thanks for watching.